And this is an outline for my topic. And first, I will introduce about the China's microeconomic situation and make an introduction about the two sessions um, and the Hong Kong market characteristics and compare it with, with the Asia market and about the impact factors and the fund stream. And a lot, I will introduce about the investment opportunities in both markets. And first, let's look at the China's current micro situation. And this is the GDP. We know the GDP means the, <coughs> means the gross domestic product. It is one of the primary indicators to gauge the country's health. And this is the GDP growth rate last year on a quarterly basis of China. And we could see here. And from the chart last year, China's GDP reached 74.41 trillion yuan and remains about like 6.7%. And from the five over five year statistics data, the economy has registered a slower but stable performance. Let's see further. And we could say that the com compared to the most economies, actually China outpaced and contributed more than 30% of growth global last year. So actually China still maintains a high economic growth. And another one is the CPI. We know the CPI is the consumer price index and it is one of the most frequently for ident identifying the periods of inflation and deflation. And we could say from this chart that the index has dropped to 0.8% last month. And specifically, this is a food price shot. Filled sharply to minus 4.3%, while the non-food price fluctuated 18 lips. So obviously, the slump of the food price is the main contributor to the CPI index last month. And the reason is because that last month, um, China has experienced a warm winter and it's the end of the spring festival. So it's caught the decline of the price food. So we, we, think, the, we think the slump of the price the slump of the food price is the main contributor to the CPI, and we expect it will rebound. It will rebound next month. And another economic indicator that people most concern is about the unemployment rate. And from this chart, we know that China has over three point. 1.3 billion people and nearly 45, 55% from the urban. And according to the statistics, a total of 30.43 million new urban jobs were added over the course of the year, and the registered unemployment rate stood at 4. Point, um, yes, this is a 4.02% at the year end, and which is the lowest level in years. And let's move on to the two sessions. So what is the two sessions? Uh, this is the full name. Actually, in China, Chinese, the, the name is called Lianghui. And it is one of the most important political events in China held early March every year. And at this time, China's top legislative and advisory bodies would gather together and discuss and approve a national development framework. And it is important to us investors because in the two sessions, and the government will set the tone for China's economic policy, and it will help for us to make the investment strategies because in China's Asia market, there are more than 80% of the retail investors from the local, and the policy from the government really have a great impact on the stock market. So let's see. Let's see. This is a key projected target for development discussed in the two sessions. And the first three is the main 
indicators we talk about. And for this year, China has set the GDP target for 6.5%, which is lower 0.2% than last year. But we should notice that this does not mean the economy will slow down, actually. And we believe, actually, the government takes the initiative to cut down the target and to leave the enough space for the overcapacity reform. And that will make sure it will not be tightened by the GDP target. And the CPI kept around 3%, which is the same as, as the last year. And the um, new urban jobs, uh, which is 1 million more than last year, the target. And if this target has been finally touched at the end of this year, it will definitely give the strong support to the China's economic development. And this target, the reduction of the energy consumption, means that the government will focus on the environmental production this year and insist on the consist uh, insist on the consist development of the economy. And the deficit to GDP ratio shows a more proactive physical policy, while it is more prudent for the monetary policy. <coughs> and as we know, just like after Donald Trump has won the Chinese uh, U.S. election, and China's RMB has faced with the face with the high pressure of the depreciation, but from the two sessions, and we know actually the government want to maintain the currency stability in the global market system, and they won't like to see it drop too much. And this chart shows the pledged fixed asset investment increased by the provinces this year, and we could say that the Xinjiang, Tibet, Guizhou, Yunnan has wrecked the top four provinces, uh, especially Xinjiang. It increased even 50%. And these four provinces compared to those like Beijing, Jiangsu, the developed province in the east, and these four located in the west of the China and with a large area but less people. So, it is reasonable for government to invest more in these provinces. And what we can get from this chart for the information for our investments, because um, most of these provinces are the neighborhood from the other countries. So actually, it will benefit to the Belt and Road Initiative-related stocks and companies. So let's see further. So based on this government top uh, government projected and we could conclude the investment strategies from those hot parts and first is the SOE reform what is SOE reform actually it's a state owned enterprises reform uh, in two sessions chinese premier li keqiang has mentioned that the SOE reform will be one of the priorities of this year's government work and it's mainly based on these seven industries. And this OE reform means the state uh, means that the method is to change the shareholding systems, allow the participation from the non-state capital, and establish a mixed ownership system. And this would in, um, in order to improve the efficiency of these state-owned enterprises. And this, the next one is uh, education and health care, we think will benefit from the promo, the consumer spending. And the Belt and Road Initiative, of course, is also one of the priorities work of this year. And uh, another two is uh, artificial and uh, environmental protection sectors, and we will talk about more later. So let's see. Let's see the investment opportunities in the Asia market. And before I share with you, uh, I will talk about the background about the Asia market in case that some of you were not so familiar with it. 
And we know that after Shenzhen and Hong, uh, Shanghai's Hong Kong Stock Connect launched, and overseas investors began to have the opportunity to assess the Asia market, but not all the stocks are trade board and due to the risk factors. And so we calculate that nearly 47% of the stocks right now are open to us overseas investors. And we know there are two stock exchange located in China, which is in Shenzhen and Shanghai, and they have their own features. In Shanghai, actually most of the stocks and companies are big and state-owned enterprises, and the financial sectors occupy the largest percent percentage, while the Shenzhen more private uh, companies choose to list it in Shenzhen, and the technology sectors occupies nearly 20% in the whole market, which is the uh, features. And let's move on. <coughs> well, the first beneficial sectors we think is the artificial intelligence. Um, these are the related stock lists we have studied for your reference. Actually, the artificial was first written in the government work report in the two sessions this year, and correspondingly, it has a very big, significant, uh, big influence on the stock market. Let's see. After investors heard about the news in the two sessions, and the sectors have outperformed, and the related stocks rose to a great height in the market. We could say that these two are the leading stocks in these sectors, and it's suddenly reached the 10% daily mm -hmm. limit this day. And after that, it has outperformed from the uh, Shenzhen component indices. And another sector we thought will benefit uh, will be beneficial is the Belt and Road Initiative, which we have mentioned. And um, it will continuously be one of the most important projects from the government. And especially Trump won the U.S. Uh, election, and China needs to seek more diversified external demand to hedge the weakening U.S. demand caused by the trade protection. And these are the achievements made by the government this year. And nearly 31, uh, they have signed new contracts with 31 countries, and the money increased by 36% this year. And these are the related stocks we could say that the most factors actually located in like the construction, the oil, the railway, the port, the shipping, and many of the companies hold the largest market cap in their sectors. Okay. <coughs> okay. Let's move on to the next one. Next one is the state-owned enterprises reform. Um, for example, this one, the China Unit Network Communications in Chinese is called Zhongguo Liantong. Um, this group was included the was included in the first bench of the pilot companies for the mixed ownership reform, and it has become the leading stocks in the state-owned enterprises reform concept in the stock market already. Okay, let's move on. The next sector we concluded for you is the healthcare and white spirit. And we have mentioned, and this is a stock list. And all, the, all of the stock lists we are chosen from the Shenzhen Hong Kong Stock Connect uh, and the Shanghai, Shenzhen, uh, Shanghai Hong Kong Connect. And it was worth to mention that the white spirit is a feature of the Asia market. The related stocks has drawn much attention from the global investors. Actually, there are very many high quality companies with good performance, like this one, Huizhou Mao Tai. Uh, its stock price has just hit the all time high record this week and became the most expensive stock in the Asia market. 
The next one uh, is a traditional Chinese medicine. It's another unique sector in Asia market. And actually many of the companies have the investment value because of its scarcity, like Yunnan Bai Yao, one of the most famous Chinese medicine product. And it is also the company that under the SOE reform. All right, let's move on. The last one uh, we think is uh, environment protection, and we have mentioned before. And it will be one of the key projects by the government this year. And the related companies will benefit from the increasing demand and investment. All right. So um, that's all for the Asia market. Let's move on to the Hong Kong. And first, we talk about the Hong Kong market characteristics. We make a comparison with the world indices of the average PE ratio, uh, like the United States, the Europe, the England, the France, Germany, Japan, and China, Asia, and the Korea. And the value of the Hansen index is very low, we could say. And that means the stocks in Hong Kong market have the investment value because of the cheap prices and the potential growth. And let's see the market structure of the Hong Kong market. And we could say that there are nearly 64% the market capitalization in, uh, of the mainland enterprises and nearly 71% 0.5% of the turnover value, and this is the total number of the mainland enterprises. That means the mainland enterprises share count for more than half of the total stocks in Hong Kong. And this is the investor structures. This is the number of the retail investors and the in institutional investors. We could say for local investors, and their number are similar, but for the overseas investors, in the institutional investors occupy the much more proportion. And that means in Hong Kong, actually the institutional investors and the overseas investors occupy the, uh, dominate the Hong Kong market. It's very different from the Asia market we have mentioned. And let's move on to the investment opportunities in Hong Kong. Uh, first, we analysis for the trend, the cash flow. And as we know, like overseas investors can only buy Asia stocks with the northbound, northbound uh, stock connect. And the China investors can only buy the southbound of the stock connect of the Hong Kong. It means they cannot buy all of them. And so we think the related stocks in the Hong Kong stock connect will be benefit. And this is the cash flow. And we could say most of the time the cash flow is above the zero line. And it means more and more cash from the mainland China flowed into the Hong Kong. And that means also means the mainland, the investors in mainland have more and more impact for the Hong Kong market. And let's see the example. And for these three stocks, and it's like in China, in Chinese, Zhou Hei Ya Mei Tu, IGG, uh, it's actually it's, um, three the very famous companies uh, among the investors in China. And this is the first day that uh, it has been adjusted to the Shenzhen Hong Kong Stock Connect. And we could say that all these three companies have rise sharply from this time. But we should notice that the high profit always companies with the high risk uh, like for the company this May 2. It's actually a new share just listed in Hong Kong Stock Exchange last December. 
and we expect this extreme fluctuation of the price was caused by the capital speculation because the boom of the stock price didn't get any fundamental support from the company's profit since it still lost losing money. And so we concluded the top 20 Hong Kong stock connect, connect stocks by the turnover because except May 2, most of the stocks related uh, the company have the good operational performance with a large market cap here. And this is for your reference. Okay, let's move on. Another concept we think will be beneficial is will be the AH share premium. And we know that some enterprises were both listed in the mainland stock exchange and the Hong Kong stock exchange. And the A share means that in mainland market and the H share means in the Hong Kong market. When the premium is positive, that means the H shares price is higher than the A share prices. <laughs> Uh, we could say from this chart, and actually most of the edge shares premium is lower than minus 20%. That means most of the stock's edge share prices were cheaper than the A share prices. And it also means they are undervalued in Hong Kong market. And we have listed uh, some of the stocks ranked by the premium gap here, by the premium gap here, and we saw that with the same companies, the edge share price is much cheaper than the A share price. Um, after the stock connect opened, actually this price gap is uh, getting smaller, and we expect the edge share of these companies will be more expensive in the future. And the last one we expect is the uh, high dividend the yield stocks. Um, since the Hong Kong market is more mature, so the traditional valuation method are more effective here. Uh, here we calculate the average trading yield of each sector in Hong Kong market, and these are the uh, top three sectors. Um, and moreover, we have considered the valuation of the PE ratio and PB ratio and the large market cap. And these are the top 20 stocks with the high dividend yield, uh, which is higher than the Hansen index average. And we expect these stocks have long-term investment value. Okay. So that's all for my speech. And right. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I uh, hope it's a good day for you guys because it's definitely an awesome day for me. Uh, on Saturdays, I always love to share uh, my views and thoughts about the markets, especially with uh, such an awesome crowd like that. All right. But for me, uh, I'll try to bring down the speed of my speech and uh, be a bit slower because today I'll be sharing a few uh, key concepts uh, with regards to uh, futures contracts. All right. So before I begin, um, I'm, re I'm required by compliance to always share this slide with my uh, audience uh, just to have a quick read through. While we are at this slide, I just want to ask uh, any futures uh, investors here, yeah, futures contracts. Okay, we have one, two, okay, just a few. What a <coughs> sorry, what about stocks? Equities, individual counters. So, okay, we are seeing quite a big base of uh, securities traders and, and investors, but not so much on futures, okay, which uh, might be why I'm here today uh, to share with you how you can integrate futures in your overall investment strategy, okay, for speculative and hedging purposes. Okay, it's extremely relevant, especially in the Chinese uh, equity space as well. So, uh, if this is okay, I'll move on and introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tian Yong, uh, investment analyst with Philip Futures. Uh, this is a quick profile. Uh, this picture was taken just a few months back. Okay, you can see how much the work has uh, cost me to age significantly. Okay, the hair is uh, still 
on the same side, all right? So, yeah, uh, I, I graduated from the Uni University of London, first class honours, and then uh, this is just a quick um, overview of who I am and what I do. Okay, my email address is over here. Feel free to look me up after this seminar, uh, and even drop me a mail if you have any questions after this. So today, I'll be introducing you to Chinese equity indices, okay, namely the Hang Seng Index and the FTS, uh, the FTSE China A50. Okay, following that, I'll teach you how to use these futures contracts to first uh, speculate, second to hedge, and also uh, some spread trading strategies that you can uh, utilize that complements your overall uh, stock portfolio. Okay? So first, I'd like to introduce you to these uh, two uh, Chinese friends that I have. Uh, one is from China, second guy or, or girl, it doesn't matter, gender, okay, is from Hong Kong. All right? So first, the FTSE China A50. Okay, it is comprised of 50 constituents made up of a, the largest blue chip A shares in China, uh, which are listed on either um, the Shanghai and the Shenzhen uh, stock exchange. Okay, second, we have the Hang Seng Index. Also, 50 constituents uh, comprised of the most liquid companies uh, on the main board of the stock exchange of Hong Kong. So this is just a very broad view. Okay, we will dive deeper doing this. But first, I'd like to start with the FTSE China A50. Has anybody heard of this index? No one. Okay. Okay. A few. Uh, US market. Um, this is in USD, uh, but the futures contract is traded through uh, SGX. Oh, SGX. SGX. Yeah. So it's denominated denominated in USD. Okay. I'll dive in deeper. Okay. From here. So what is this um, index? The FTSE China A50. Okay. As I've mentioned earlier. Okay. It comprises of the 50 largest blue chip companies listed on both Shanghai and Shenzhen stock, connect, uh, stock exchange. Okay, these are the constituents and these are their sectors. All right, so if you just scan through, you can see a lot of very big names here. Okay, I believe Alice has shared a bit on some of the counters, uh, including your white spirits, okay, uh, your, um, your, your multi, okay, it's over there as well, it's under consumer goods. And of course, uh, this index is very heavy on your financials, okay, namely your banks and insurance companies. Okay. Okay, uh, which makes it quite volatile as well. Okay, so following this, okay, the um, ICV industry weights are as follows. You can see at a glance, financials are the heavy weights of this index. Okay, coming in, coming in at close to seventy percent, around seventy percent, uh, while you have consumer goods, industrials, oil and gas, etc. Okay, so the sector of interest, the industry of interest, would be financials for this index. To do a deeper uh, dive into the financials. Further breakdown indicate that you know the banks are the ones driving the financials, which is in turn driving the index. Okay, so banks, insurance, financial services, and uh, also real estate. So uh, this is just a quick breakdown. So if there's a big move in the index, okay, most of the time the financials are the main culprits behind the movements, and the financial sector is extremely volatile uh, on multiple fronts. If you have your regulatory front. Okay, the uh, Chinese government has recently, Chinese regulators have been recently trying to clamp down on all of speculative trading, uh, breathing down the necks of the insurance industries and the banking, uh, more of the insurance industries. So you can see a lot of movements in this index. All right. So with regards to this index, okay, its correlation with other indices is not very high. Okay, um, the related related movements are limited mostly to Asia. Okay. So, um, for those who are not familiar with the concept of correlation, okay, a correlation of zero means that this index is totally not related to the movements in other indices. Correlation of one shows a perfect correlation. So, it's a one for one movement, positive movement. Okay? So, as you can see here, the numbers here are all positive, meaning to say the correlation is mostly positive. If it goes up, it tends to be up a bit. Okay? This is what it means. Of course, uh, the FTSE China A50 is perfectly correlated with itself. If it moves up, it moves up. <laughs> That's why it's perfect one. Okay, the next one you have your uh, CSI 300, Hang Seng Index, and uh, even your Thai X. So these are Greater China equities, and you can see at a glance the red bars. Okay, they tend to have higher numbers as compared as compared to the blue bars and the green bars. So this FTSE China A50 is a very isolated and contained index. Okay, it is not particularly related to movements in the U.S. or even the Europe space. Okay, it's a very contained index, contained within Greater China and Asia. Okay, so it's a very Asian, it's a very uh, isolated index based on this chart. Okay. 
When it comes to the futures contracts on the FTSE China A50, uh, the strange thing about this contract, uh, two strange things. It's a Chinese index, but the futures contract is traded on SGX. Okay, that's, a, that's the first thing. Second thing, it is denominated in USD. So the contract is in USD terms. You take the index points, when you trade, okay, you look at the margin requirement, everything is in USD. So P&L is in USD as well. Okay, that's, that's the thing about this index. Uh, minimum price fluctuation, uh, USD $2.50, uh, uh, contract months, okay. When it comes to futures contracts, we don't just trade one contract. There are many months, expiration months. For this contract, is two months at a time. Okay, so now, okay, now it's um, March. Okay, um, so the um, the latest contract, okay, the March contract should be expiring soon. It's not already expired, and then the next two available months will be uh, June and September. So there are only two contracts at a time. Okay, for this um, for this index. Okay, which is how you can trade them now. Okay, so T session T plus one. Okay, from here you can see that um, based on these two sessions, uh, okay, you can see that uh, this contract can be traded close to 24 hours a day. Very long trading hours as compared to stocks as well. So exposure is uh, almost around the clock. Okay, so all these other things. Okay, these are just um, other um, details on the futures contracts. Okay, you can take a picture and have a read for yourself. Okay, uh, but all you need to know is that. Um, it is in USD and it's traded on the SGX. Okay, further details we can discuss with that as well. Okay. So next, okay, in a similar fashion, I want to introduce you to another index, Hang Seng Index. Okay, I'm sure everybody knows what the Hang Seng Index is. Okay, and uh, quite a few of you are quite familiar with what the Hang Seng Index is. It is same but not the same but different from the A50. So the Hang Seng Index, okay, once again, 50 largest and most liquid companies on the main board of the Stock Exchange of Hong Kong, okay, constituents are listed over here. Once again, you see a whole list of financials. Okay, financials dominate this index again. Okay, and you have other counters of interest like Tencent, China Mobile, okay, a lot of big names here, and a lot of repeated names, familiar names uh, as, as compared to what we have seen earlier in the A50. Okay, financials dominate once again. So movements in the banks and the insurers and other um, financial services firms will move this index greatly. Okay, but real estate takes a bigger weight in the Hang Seng as compared to the A50. Banks dominate regardless. All right. So as compared to what we have seen in the A50, Hang Seng Index correlation is higher across the board. So meaning to say that the Hang Seng Index, sorry about this, meaning to say that the Hang Seng Index, it's more related to global equities as compared to the A50. So while the A50 Index is a very isolated index, the Hang Seng Index is a more global index. It's a gateway to the world. So movements in the US space can move uh, the Hang Seng Index. Uh, like the S&P and the Dow Jones uh, recently, okay, there was a minor correction because the markets in the US uh, were starting to get doubtful about US President Trump's ability to deliver his campaign promises. So we saw S&P 500 Dow Jones correct. Next morning, Hang Seng also slumped. All right, so you can see the spillover in sentiment uh, that the Hang Seng tends to, tends to enjoy or suffer from. Okay, with regards to the US markets, even the Chinese markets also can move the Hang Seng. So, in a sense, you can expect a lot of volatility from this index as well. Okay? So, average correlation is 0 0.56 for the Hang Seng Index uh, across uh, this set of uh, indices. With regards to the A50, it's significantly lower. Okay? So, when it comes to the Hang Seng Index, uh, there are two types of contracts. One is the full-size contract, one is the mini Hang Seng. Um, to be honest, the more popular contract amongst uh, our customers is the mini Hang Seng Index because uh, the initial margin is smaller. Okay, you need a, you need lesser funds to actually trade one contract. Okay, so uh, all these are the specifications. All right, so the number of um, contracts over here is spot next calendar month and next to calendar quarter month. So looking at this, okay, available contracts to trade is four at a time, so you can trade longer horizon. Okay, as compared to A50. But if you want to maintain exposure to any index, you can actually keep rolling over your contract. So you can you can keep your position in the market for as long as possible using futures contracts. All right. 
So trading hours, as you can see, very long trading hours as well, uh, as, uh, as similar to the A50, okay, close to 24 hours, very, very long trading hours. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about would be the difference between A and H shares. I believe Alice has uh, mentioned a few things about A listed shares and H listed shares, how many percent make up uh, the number of stocks in the Hong Kong market and uh, what A shares basically are. So today I want to share with you a bit of the key differences. differences. Okay, A shares are quoted in CNY, okay, while H shares is quoted in HKD. That's a fundamental uh, fact about the difference. Second, the listed exchanges are different. A shares are listed on Chinese exchanges while H shares are listed on Hong Kong exchange. Availability to foreigners, okay, um, it is safe to say that they are largely available to foreigners now, both A and H shares. Okay? And the constituent overlaps between the A50 index and the Hang Seng index are this set of shares. So we can find these counters in both the A50 and the Hang Seng index. Just that for the A50, it will be the A listed shares, while these constituents on the Hang Seng Index will be the H listed shares. And there are differences in prices, even when converted to the same currency as shared by Alice earlier. Okay, we'll examine a few examples. So first, you have um, China Construction Bank over here. Okay, the red line is the, is the A share, the orange line is the H share. I've converted them both to CNY, same currency, and yet you can see price difference. Okay. Uh, what does this mean? Okay, arbitrage opportunities. Okay, you can do spread between the counters. Okay, and uh, volume-wise, it's also very different. Okay, some counters have persistently high uh, H share um, volume advantage over the A shares. Okay, so in this case, the H shares have much higher volume and tends to have lower prices for now. Okay, another one, Ping An Insurance Group. In this case, it's the reverse. The A share volume is much higher. And H share volume. And lastly, okay, okay, right. This is this is the same. Okay, so let's move on to the juice of this presentation. Okay, speculating with equity index futures. All right, speculation. Investors can stand to make a lot of money by trading futures. Okay, they also can stand to lose quite a lot. Okay, uh, one key thing, one key concept when it comes to futures is leverage. Okay, you have heard earlier, 3.5 times, 2.5 times, okay, that is very small when uh, compared to the world of futures contracts. Okay, we can look at multiples 10 times, 20, okay, that kind of leverage. So, I'm just going to share a few example to show you the effects of leverage and short selling, okay, when it comes to futures contracts. So a few things you need to know before you engage in futures contracts is that first, they are derivatives. Their value is based on something else. So if you are trading a futures contract on the Hang Seng Index, okay, the underlying is known as the Hang Seng Index and it is a futures contract on the Hang Seng Index. And they tend to expire, so they have expiration dates. So for instance, if you want to maintain a one-year position in the Hang Seng Index through futures contracts, you have to roll over your contract. Okay? So when the contract expires, you have to close it off, buy a new one for the next month and the next month and the next month. All right, so this is called rolling over. Number two, futures contracts are leveraged. So for instance, you want a 10,000 Hong Kong dollar exposure in a Hang Seng Index. Okay, all you need is just a fraction. You do not need to put a whole 10,000 inside. Perhaps you just need a fraction, maybe two, 3,000 okay, or even less. Okay, I'll show you an example later. Okay, this is called leverage. As a result, a movement in a $10,000 exposure divided by your smaller initial outlay gives you a higher percentage return. So this amplifies both your gains and your losses. And lastly, futures contracts allow you to have bi-directional views. Okay, you can go long if you are bullish, you can go short if you are bearish. So opportunities arise in both up and down movements in the index. We stand to earn from up moves as well as down moves. Okay, which is why speculators love to trade futures. Okay, uh, speculators, investors, short-term or even mid-term investors, they love to trade futures. Okay, to make amplified, potentially amplified profits within short periods of time. Okay, this is the key feature when you want to speculate using futures contracts. Okay, I'll show you a trade example. Okay, so before we get to that, you can see that the futures contract price and the underlying index price is almost identical. 
with a very small difference. Okay, the red line in this chart is the actual Hang Seng Index, the orange line is the futures contract, mini contract on the Hang Seng Index. As you can see, you can't see the red line. Okay, because the two lines are at the same. Okay, correlation is close to perfect, 0 0.9926. I mentioned earlier the highest correlation, the perfect correlation is 1. So you can see that the prices are so closely tracking the actual thing that you are exposed to. Okay, so first, tracking is very, very tight, very close. And let's move on to um, speculating example. Okay, let me just talk a bit about speculation. When you speculate, all of us speculate. When we trade stocks, all of us speculate. When you go long on the stock, you go long on the stock. You're speculating that you'll go. Uh, you want to make profits. Okay, it is purely with the intention to earn. Okay, a few ways they can speculate. Okay, you can form a view. Okay, you can think that oh, tonight CPI number is going to be very low. Okay, so I want to long. I want to long this certain stock that correlates negatively with CPI. Second, you can use technical analysis. Okay, for those who are interested in technical analysis, okay, you can arrange for more training after this. But basic indicators, support and resistance, you can look at indicators like RSI, MACD, okay, even your ADX, your pivot points, Fibonacci levels, all these things, all right, moving averages. Okay, lastly, there's uh, another group of investors, they just go with the sentiment. They go with the animal spirits. Okay, like for those sentiment traders who went long on US stocks after November 9 Donald Trump victory, until now, they will have been a lot richer now. Okay, but if they if they hold up, uh, maybe fifty percent of their profits are really wiped out now. Uh, okay, so few kind few ways you can speculate using, you know, uh, one of these three or even all three or two of them. So let's just have an example. Um, this example is from December last year until February this year. This is the actual price chart of the uh, Hang Seng, uh, mini Hang Seng futures. Okay, so it was trending up. Okay, the red line is the twenty period moving average. 20 SMA, so it's a smooth line. So the idea here is that <clears> Hang <throat> Seng Index has been trending up. This trader, uh, Mr. Trader, let's call him Mr. Trader, this trader is waiting for the index to break down below the 20 SMA for a possible short position uh, using Hang Seng Index futures. So at late February, February 28, he saw that the Hang Seng Index broke down from its 20 SMA. So he decides, okay, this is my signal. I'm going to go short. Okay, going to go short on a mini Hang Seng March futures. He went short at twenty three thousand eight hundred and fifty one index points. That's his entry position. Okay, he planned his exit. He uh, he told himself, I'm going to go short at the price, and when the prices test the twenty three point six percent Fibonacci level, I'm going to close out the short position. Okay, so this is the level, the twenty three percent. Fibonacci level and the Hang Seng index, as expected, tested that level. So based on his trade idea, he's going to close up his short position. So he went in at two three eight five one. Okay, then he closed out at two three five zero eight. Okay, using mini Hang Seng index futures. How did he? How, what is his P and L? So based on this trade, okay, he traded one March mini Hang Seng index futures contracts and he went short. Entry his initial margin required was less than the index points because of leverage. Okay, so he just he was required to put a margin of fourteen thousand nine hundred and fifty Hong Kong dollars. His entry price, okay, two three eight five one. This actual executed price, okay, based on this example, and he exited at this price. Okay, to calculate the P and L. Okay, we take the exit, we take the entry price minus the exit price because it's a short position. When prices get lower, you earn more. Multiplied by the multiplier, you get 3,430 Hong Kong dollars. How does it translate to percentage profits? Okay, keep in mind that this is just 10 days, 10 calendar days, and he earned this amount with a very small move in the index. He made a 23% profit in 10 days, okay, before transaction cost. All right, so in this example, I'm, I hope that it highlights the advantages of futures. First, you can short, second is leverage. Profits amplified, losses as well. Okay. So before I move on, okay, I just want to share that um, for this, this is just an example. Okay, there are no transaction costs in this example. Okay, let's move on. Uh, next, let's talk about hedging with equity index futures. 
Besides speculation, you can use futures to hedge against your own portfolio of stocks. So I believe there are a lot of stock, uh, stock investors over here. Some of you have a big basket of Chinese stocks, Hong Kong stocks, or even both, or even a lot of stocks all over the place. All right, many, many stocks. Okay, using futures contracts, you can hedge against adverse moves in your portfolio. Okay, uh, some of you like to buy and hold. You are net bullish over the one, two year horizon. You just keep the stocks there, but maybe you foresee something really bad happening in the near term, but you don't expect it to last. You just want to protect your portfolio for this period of time. How are you going to use in, uh, index futures to, to achieve hedging against these movements? Okay. So to hedge, you guys must understand this symbol here. Okay. Does anybody know what this symbol stands for? The answer is on the screen. <laughs> it stands for beta. Okay, beta is a number. What is beta? Let me introduce you to beta. Okay, I've seen him every day in school when I was studying. Okay, so beta is basically how sensitive this stock is to the index. Okay, so the higher the number, the more sensitive it is. Okay, if it's, uh, if it's 0 0.4, not so sensitive. If it's 1, it's exactly the same. If it's 5, the Hang Seng index move 1%, the stock will move 5%. Very sensitive. Okay, so it is a measure of market risk, only market risk. And uh, this is an example. For example, if a stock has a beta 1.5, uh, with respect to the A15 index, okay, when the index moves 1%, the stock is expected to move 1.5%. So this is how I read beta. Okay. Okay, and this number is very important when it comes to hedging. So just to let you have a snapshot, this is this is the six one beta of all the constituents of the FTSE China A15. Okay, I've split them up according to uh, industries. Uh, this is dated 16 March. Okay, they tend to change slightly over time, but this is a rough for you to get a rough idea on what is very sensitive. Uh, one look, you can know that you know that industrials tend to be much more sensitive as compared to healthcare. Okay, it's very clear. Whereas you have your consumer goods, which are slightly less sensitive. All right. And uh, this is just half, approximately half of all the uh, constituents in the A50. All right, so. Okay, have a quick look on this. Okay, next, let, let me continue. This whole page is financials uh, because the A50 has so many of them. Okay, financials, they vary quite a lot. You can see that insurance firms are more sensitive than um, other types of financial firms like your banks, etc. All right. Okay. I mean, this is useful to know. Okay. okay the same for the Hang Seng. Hang Seng index constituents. Uh, this is more all over the place. Okay, uh, you have to look really look at the individual stocks to determine the beta. Okay, and this. Okay, so one thing to note is that uh, this beta reading changes over time. So relationships don't expect them to stay the same forever. Okay, they can they can change over time. But when you hedge, you can use uh, the current beta to gauge approximately how much you need to short uh, to actually cover and protect against your stock portfolio. So let's look at a, a hedging example first. Okay, this is the story. Okay, the story is that you have a basket of China A shares and you are bullish on your holdings over the long, longer term, like one, two years, even three, four years. But you foresee a very short term uh, downward correction in the markets and you don't want to sell and buy again. You just want to protect your portfolio for say one, two weeks. Okay, you want to protect your portfolio against down moves and after that you are still bullish on your uh, equity basket. Okay, so you want to use futures to hedge against these uh, possible adverse movements in the short term. And Mr. Trader, okay, he revealed his uh, portfolio to me. Uh, this is his holdings and this is uh, the statistics of his counters. Okay, all this, this, all this is just a fictitious, uh, it's an example. 
So he has five different counters with a different number of shares. His exposure in CNY is this, and we calculated the portfolio weight over here. So uh, to get the weight, it's basically your exposure divided by the total CNY exposure. This portfolio beta, okay, I'll explain to you, is this times this, you get weighted beta, right? And repeat and add them all together, you get your overall portfolio beta. So overall, your portfolio has a beta of 0 0.77 with the A50 index, okay? Meaning to say that it is not a one-to-one -one movement. If A50 moved by 1%, this one is expected to move only by 0.77%. Okay, so this is what me is. Okay, so this is setting up your hedge and calculating what you need. Next, okay, this is the full process. So we have determined that our portfolio beta is 0 0.77, portfolio exposure is 40,000, 40.8,000, and then we want to hedge our exposure. Okay, so the actual exposure we need to hedge is not 40.8,000. We don't need so much because our portfolio is not so sensitive. We don't need so much exposure, we only need 77% of 40,000. So the actual exposure we need is only 31.5,000. Okay, what does this mean? One A50 contract okay, has an exposure of 10.45,000. How many contracts do you need? It's simple, 31,000 divided by 10.45. You only need to short three contracts. Okay, so once you, you can enter into a short position, with, with three contracts to protect this portfolio, once you feel that the down move is over, close out the short position. Okay, resume your net long position. All right? Is it too complicated? It's okay, right? This is quite simple, okay? And then you have it, your hedge can be set up. But one thing to note about this example, A50 contract is in USD. Okay, your Asia exposure is in, okay? So there's a currency difference. This example only covers the point to point. Let's not cover the forex segment. For forex hedging, okay, you need to do another hedge. Okay, that's if you want. Uh, but if you're bullish on the USD against the UN, then you don't even need to hedge. Okay, but if you want a full hedge, you should hedge, hedge both the index movements using beta and also the forex aspect. Okay. So lastly, spread trading. Okay, this is more sexy, more exotic, but I just want to introduce you to a few ideas you can that you can employ. Um, to use both stocks and futures to do spread trading. The first one is your of course stock to future spread. So for instance, you know that somehow this company is going to do extremely well because of some new finding or some new business prospect. And you know that it's just going to apply to this company. While on the other hand, you are very bearish on the entire Chinese market in general. What you can do is that you can long the stock and short the futures. You earn the spread between the two. Okay, you find a ratio the one to one ratio so that what you earn is only the difference between the outperformance of this stock and the underperformance of the index. Okay, this is one idea. Okay, I shall not go into a go, I shall not go into the specifics because that will take quite some time, but this is one idea that you can employ futures as well. Second, calendar spread. Okay, remember that the futures contracts have different contract months. Meaning to say you can employ a calendar spread. You can go long on one month and go short on the other month. Okay, because you're just bullish on during this time period. Concentrated bullishness means next three months, I think Chinese equities are going to go up. I'm going to long the near contract and short the further contract. Why do people do this? Because if you go long on one contract, one calendar contract and short on the other one on the same index, uh, your required margin is even lower. Meaning to say the denominator is lower, your percentage profits are much higher especially when your view is just within this period of time. Okay? So instead of 10,000, maybe you need only 5,000. Means your percentage profits double. Okay? This is just an example. Yeah, which is basically what I said earlier. Okay, the text here. So there are many exciting things that I can do with futures contracts. Okay, these are just a few examples. Speculation, hedging, and also spread trading. So to wrap up, Today, I introduced you to the two indices, the FTSE China A50 Hang Seng Index, and also uh, the difference between A and H shares. Second, we have speculation, uh, the nature of futures contracts, uh, how futures track the underlying and the speculation process with an example. Next, we talk about hedging, how important beta is in understanding uh, hedging, and I describe how the hedging process actually occurs.
with an example as well. And lastly, I introduce you to spread trading. Okay, we have stock to future spread and also the claim to spread. So this is a broad overview of what I've shared today with you uh, in the future space. Okay, with regards to Hong Kong and Chinese equities.